Hi, welcome. Hello. I'm Dave Moraine. Welcome to the uh, Math Notations uh, channel on YouTube. Uh, today we're going to uh, talk about instructional uh, strategies for teaching the uh, multiplication principle. I think the L may not be that visible here. And uh, you can Google Math Notations uh, to see uh, my blog and I usually will embed these uh, videos in my blog or you can just go to this channel any uh, anytime you want um, I haven't yet set it up for uh, for publication but it will be anyway um, I'm gonna do a very well-known simple standard uh, question um, that uh, demonstrates uh, different ways of solving a counting problem and I'd like to get this all done in about uh, 10 minutes so that I can uh, upload it to um, YouTube. That's my goal. So let's begin. Um, this is a standard problem you see in upper elementary textbooks, middle school, and it would be a very simple exercise for the high school student. There are more sophisticated versions of this. A pizza problem for uh, eighth graders and high school students taking standardized tests including um, SATs etc. Um, you can read it the uh, restaurant is offering uh, three different crusts you could select from and uh, after you uh, pick a crust you choose one topping and I uh, emphasize that there's a sequence or an order to this. First you choose your crust followed by a topping. And my focus here is more on instructional strategies. If a student is reading this they're going to get bored because it's going to take me a while to get through the different methods but anyone who wants to watch it you're welcome to. Um, I believe in a variety of strategies. Before we get to the shortcut method called the slot method or the multiplication principle of counting, it has other names as well, I think even with high school students uh, it's a very good idea to have them list some of the possible ways for the um, problem to occur. In this case we're building a pizza so we can uh, choose names for different crusts, thick, thin, whatever, and we can have the students pick actual toppings. For the elementary students, I think you would want to do that, and in fact, you would probably want to have physical cutouts of uh, different crusts of pizza and let them cut out some toppings and color it and all those things that kids love to do. Uh, by the time they reach upper elementary um, and middle school, they should be able to handle a symbolic way of listening. And in fact, I um, would even recommend that for uh, fourth graders, if not third. So uh, we're going to use C1, C2, C3 for the names of the three different crusts and T1, T2, T3, T4 for the four different toppings. And one way we could show um, the different possibilities here is a crisscross diagram. And it's easy to do it for that first crust and it looks like the tree model that we're going to get to in a moment. But if you continue doing this, it gets sloppy and messy and if um, there were more choices than two like this, then I don't know if this method would be practical. So uh, crust two could be uh, associated with any one of four toppings and the same with crust three. So what we have are, um, what's well, a mess there. So many students will list it uh, just straight out. Crust one, topping one is one of the possible ways of uh, building your pizza. We'll stay with crust one and go to topping two, then crust one, 
topping three, crust one, topping four. So here you have a group of four, group of four, and we could then make a second group of four using crust two, and then a third group of four using crust three. So what we have are three groups of four. Now this is a verbal description. This is a list. This is a visual. And we're trying to combine all those representations. And I think that that's important. We have symbolic as well. And now we have other visual representations, but before we move on, we would certainly expect students from third grade on to know that three groups of four is modeled by multiplication, three times four. So there are 12 ways to build our pizza. Now we'll move on to the tree model. The tree model, you have your starting point or node, and from there we have our first set of choices for the crust. And as we did a few moments ago, crust one, crust two, crust three. And from crust one, we have four branches coming out for each of the toppings. Topping one, topping two, topping three, topping four. There's our first set of four ways. <clears throat> then we would similarly have our second set of four ways to build the pizza and our third set. I'm not going to label the ends. So again, we have 12 ways using a tree model. This is often used for counting, uh, for permutations later on, and for probability problems. The listing method, some way of listing, is still one of the best ways for students uh, to be successful. As long as you don't have to list hundreds of ways, it doesn't take too long. And I'm going to move on now to the table approach. And a table looks a little bit like the list, but it's a two-dimensional table. C1, C2, C3 down this left column. And then we're going to have T1, T2, another column for T3, and our fourth column for T4. And then we complete the rows. And this does look like a multi multiplication table, doesn't it? So we can represent the 12 ways this way. C1, T1, C1, T2. The row meets the column. And so even in elementary school, the student is relating multiplication tables to um, a spreadsheet or matrix form that they'll see later on in mathematics and it's a very powerful uh, model. Uh, clearly, these models would not be as effective if we were building a pizza with other ingredients, like maybe a second topping. <clears throat> the table would get out of hand. Uh, the tree would still work. The tree is a good model. Listing it might be more cumbersome as well. So we come now to the slot method. Now that we've seen the answer is 12 by a multiplication model three ways, we're going to develop a shortcut for the multiplication. We're, here we're going to use two slots, one to represent our choice of uh, crust, and one to represent our choice of topping. I have to speed up here. I'm running out of time. And I often recommend to students to list the three crusts and the choices underneath the toppings as well. Count. We have three choices here, and I suggest putting it in parentheses. It drives the point home that this is a multiplication model, not an additive model. <clears throat> and the idea is <clears throat> building a pizza means you choose a crust in three ways, and after you've chosen a crust, you then have four ways to choose a topping. So for each of these three, there are four ways to perform the second event. So event number one, followed by event number two, and that's the idea behind the multiplication principle. I'm not going to write it out formally or tell you the most general form, which involves n events, but this gives you the basic idea. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to stop right here again. 
Visit my blog, Math Notations. Thank you.